Hi guys, my name's Craig, welcome to Small Farmer Life. Well today I want to talk about how I got my land for free and how you could do the same if you just followed a few simple rules and had the little checklist that I had when I went out looking for land. Now, before we get into the video, if you like small farming, you're thinking about starting a small farm, you're looking to buy some agricultural land so you can start a small farm from scratch like me, maybe you want to start a small farm and business like me, maybe you want to start a small holder and eventually live on that land. If you're thinking about doing anything like that, then think about hitting that subscribe button because I do cover that topic a lot on this channel. Also, go back and check out some of the videos I've already uploaded to the channel. You might find some useful information in those videos and think about hitting the bell button for future videos. But today, I want to talk about how I got my land for free and how you could do the same. Now, when I got first interested in land, it was about... 10 years ago, and it was because I went to my friend's place, the guy who I talk about who went down the four year and one day route, living in a barn where he blocked off half of the barn with breeze blocks, and he lived in it like it was his own home, and he bought about two acres of land. And I went to visit him one day, and I thought, wow, this is a bit of me, I'd love to own some land, and that was the start of me actually being interested in land, and researching everything I needed to know about purchasing some land. Probably what you're doing if you're thinking about buying some land and you want to live off grid or you want to start a small farm or something like that. So I actually went online and done all the research I could, all the reading I could, I watched as many videos as I could, I read books on buying land and all sorts of things. And then I realized that when I looked online at land sales that most of them came with restrictions or clawbacks attached to the land. And a clawback is basically, if you ever get the right to live on the land, then you're gonna pay a massive lump sum. I'm gonna discuss clawbacks in another video, but that's what they are. Now, every single small land sale I looked at had a clawback on it, or if it was another small land sale, it already had plan of permission and it was really expensive. Now, I didn't have that type of money to pay for a piece of land that had plan of permission, and I didn't want to buy land with a clawback on it. So, the only other thing I could think of was actually going out there and physically driving around in the car, going up farm tracks, going into farms and asking the farmers, going into country shops and asking people who are in the local community if they knew of any land for sale. So. I asked a lot of people and drove around a lot of villages around my town, just about two miles away from my town, that sort of thing. And then one day I walked into a horse tax shop and a guy pointed me in this direction. He knew the guy who owned the house that he lived in next door to the land that I own now. Now, it was a perfect piece of land. It was the perfect size. It was six acres, so it was just over twice the size of what I wanted, so I only wanted 2.5 acres. So I thought, if it ticks all the boxes, this is perfect. So I spoke to the guy, I said, does it have electricity, or is the access to electricity anywhere around where I can access it myself from my own land? He said, yes, the access point's there, and you can dig up my drive to actually put the cable in. That was great. He didn't charge me anything to do it. He could have charged me something. And even if somebody does, it's still well worth it because electricity will add value to the land anyway. And I asked about water. He said it's at the front entrance. That was another box ticked on my list. I asked about access. He said, I'll grant your access. Now, I said, will you put it in the title deed? He went, yes. Now, it's important that it goes in your title deed for you and a predecessor because if it's not for you and predecessors, because what that means is you can sell a piece of the land and grant that person who you're selling the land to access also. So there's another box ticked. I asked him about clawbacks and restrictions. No clawbacks, no restrictions or anything like that restricting me from doing what I wanted to do. There is a covenant saying I can't keep horses on here, but that means I can't livery horses on here because I'm sat in a stable of six stables in the stable block. Now, soon as he said all of that, I didn't drag my feet. I just said, yep, I'll buy it. And that was it. I got the ball rolling. And 
I went to see my solicitor, got them to do a check, further checks that I wanted done on the land and came back that everything was fine and that was it, deal was done. First thing I done when I actually got took possession of the land was get electricity put on the land because I knew that was one of the main things I wanted to have done on the land because if the guy ever sold up, which he did, I might not get the chance again. So that was done straight away. And the second thing I did was get planning permission for six stables. Because it was six acres, well, they say that one horse should have one acre of land to graze on, so I knew planning permission would be granted straight away for the six stables. And in the past, it already had planning permission passed on the land, but it had lapsed. So I knew I was going to get that straight away. And then, as soon as I got that passed, then I started actively looking for a buyer of the other half of the land. So I was going to sell half of the land to somebody else for the full price I paid for all of the land. But this time, any potential buyer knew it had access to electricity, access to water, vehicle access, and no clawbacks on it. So, when I put it out there in the ecosystem around the local town and people who I know, and believe me, it spreads like wildfire when you're selling some land because it's a finite object, they're not making it no more, so a lot of people want to buy it. I even got offers for more than I wanted to sell it for, but they weren't the right people I wanted to own land next to me. So eventually the right person came along. He's a great neighbor. You want great neighbors. We get along like a house on fire. We lend each other tools and that sort of thing. We always chatting, everything like that. Everything you would expect from a good neighbor. He even drops me logs off me log burner and wood chippings for around me chicken coops and that sort of thing. So he said he would buy half of the land. He made an offer. I didn't accept the first offer. He made another offer. That covered the cost of me buying my land. So I got my 2.7 acres because he purchased 3.3 acres off me. I got 2.7 acres for free when he only wanted 2.5 acres, but 2.7 is near enough. And I also said that he had to pay for the access track to be put in to access his land and also for the boundary fence to be built between his land and my land. And that's as simple as it was, guys. It wasn't hard. So if you follow them simple rules and you have that little tick list and you get them crossed off, then you should be able to do the same also because you're going out actively looking for land to buy. It's not being put on line or in estate agents' windows or land agents or anything like that who are putting clawbacks on it for the seller or putting it into the seller's head. So you're going out to actively find it and it's not as hard as you might think if you look for double the amount of land that you want to actually get your land for free. But it also has to be in the right area, like close to a town. You could do it exactly the same and get land for free. So until next time, guys, my name's Craig. You've been watching A Small Farm Alive. And guys, before I go, I have set up some more teas on my Patreon page. If you want to support the channel, well, you can support it for the price of a cup of coffee. Or you can pick another tier if you want personal one-on-one -on -one, or you want to join the community and ask personal questions. You can still ask questions in the comment section. But if you want more detailed answers, then you can nip over to Patreon. I'll leave that link in the description of the video. And if you like the video, hit the like button. If you want to subscribe, hit the subscribe button. If you want to be notified of more upcoming videos, hit the bell button. And until next time, take care of yourself. And most of all, take care of the family. Bye for now. See ya.